So for the cingulate gyrus and the basal ganglia, these are both structures that it's still a little bit debatable about whether they are part of the limbic system or not, which is why I kept them as a separate slide as opposed to um, being with the limbic slide, limbic system slide, which I have next. So um, the cingulate gyrus, it's responsible for emotion and pain. And um, also, another function is for predicting and avoiding negative consequences. Um, and the cingulate gyrus is this area here that's a little bit tan um, and also outlined with this red line here. It's just this outer portion. And then the basal ganglia is responsible for motor functions. And so the basal ganglia is this purple area right behind. Um, yes. So to keep you guys, uh, help you guys get oriented where all of these structures are. Um, since we are going into the limbic system on the next slide, let me just show you guys where we are for the next structures because this picture uh, will not be coming on, up on the next slide. So. The hypothalamus is this lower portion here where you can see my mouse circling. The thalamus is the larger portion here in the, um, it's right next to the hypothalamus, but uh, it's in the upper right portion. And a good way to remember like the orientation, hypothalamus is usually meaning like under. So hypo is like that portion underneath the thalamus. And then, the hippocampus is this portion at the end here, and the amygdala is this yellow portion here. So, okay, now we're gonna go into the next slide, which has quite a lot of information. So the limbic system is made up of the hypothalamus, the amygdala, the thalamus, and the hippocampus. And a really popular uh, acronym as well for the limbic system is HAT HIPPO, which uh, HAT, so H for hypothalamus, um, A for amygdala, T for thalamus, and HIPPO for hippocampus. And so the function of the thalamus is mainly for the sensory relay station. Um, the thalamus is able to relay all of this. Um, it's able to receive information from all of the senses, like um, taste, touch, for actually not all of them, most of them, um, except for smell. So that's just one factoid about thalamus because it's actually closer to the lower area, which, um, which uh, is why the Thalamus is mainly responsible for all of the other senses, but just not smell. And then um, the amygdala is responsible for anger or violence and fear or anxiety. And the hippocampus is responsible for forming new memories. So turning short-term memories into long-term memories is mainly um, the hippocampus's function. And then finally, the last part of the limbic system, the hypothalamus, which you guys probably know a lot about because uh, the hypothalamus comes up a lot in the bio section as well, um, is uh, it regulates the autonomic nervous system. So that is, you know, the fight or flight response and the rest slash digest response. Um, fight or flight usually when you are like startled or, um, all of your senses are heightened and then rest and digest when you're relaxed and not in a state of threat. Um, it's also responsible for regulating the endocrine system. So the major hormones that are associated uh, with the hypothalamus and the endocrine system are epinephrine and norepinephrine. And then the anterior portion of the hypothalamus is responsible for feeding and reproduction. Um, also, 
I guess. So also for the purposes of the parts of the hypothalamus, uh, the lateral, the posterior, and um, hold on. The lateral, posterior, and ventromedial, um, they come up on some review books. However, uh, I guess in terms of MCAT questions, I haven't really seen them that much. Um, but for the lateral portion of the hypothalamus, uh, it's related for feeding behavior and thermoregulation and sleep. And the reason why I put LH here is because when the lateral portion is uh, damaged in a way, then people feel less hungry. So that's like an acronym to remember. Um, lateral, when it's damaged, you feel less hungry, which means that usually if it's normally functioning, then you would be eating normally. And then for the posterior portion of the hypothalamus, it's responsible for thermal regulation. Um, and finally, for the ventromedial area of the hypothalamus, it is responsible for eating and satiety, so feeling full. And when this part of the hypothalamus is damaged, it causes people to not be able to feel that sati satiation. So they end up feeling very much hungry, which is what this acronym stands for, VMH.